I have three older sisters, and all of my sisters had aspired to be something great. And me being the only boy in the family, there was no way I was gonna let those girls beat me. So the thing that attracted me to engineering initially was the idea that we could create things that don't already exist. Um, being, being black in, in, in South Africa was not necessarily just a walk in the park. As a black woman in a mainly, I guess, man, a male-oriented field, I, I didn't focus on what I'm perceived as. The thing that drives me is getting up every morning thinking that, hey, what I'm doing could save the world. This is my aircraft. I used to watch a lot of sci-fi as a child, Star Trek, and I kind of wanted to make that type of reality uh, into reality. So I went into aerospace engineering. My main project is a project called Exhale. It's an experimental, high-altitude, long-endurance aircraft. I'm building an experimental version so that we can actually take it out, fly it, gather data on this type of aircraft, and use it to validate the simulations that my lab and other labs across the country have been developing. After graduating from undergrad, I, I realized that there were still, there were still certain skill sets um, which I needed to build upon. You know, the key thing about grad school is that it allows you the opportunity to build upon the body of knowledge that's, that's currently out there. So there's a variety of different paths after graduate school. You can go into consulting, you can go into the, the pure engineering field where you go work for an engineering company. Uh, you can go and work for, in the policy side of things, advising people who make laws. You can do research. You can go directly into management position. African Americans are definitely underrepresented in engineering. I think that it is primarily because African Americans don't see other African Americans as engineers. When I was growing up, even though I lived in a relatively affluent community, with a lot of very educated people. I saw doctors, I saw lawyers, saw a lot of politicians just because of the area. I didn't see very many engineers, not a lot of scientists. There is a lack of confidence in general. And like I say, that was something that I faced because I was always asking myself, you know, am I capable of this? When I looked around me and I didn't necessarily see people that looked like me, my question was, was I, was I at the level, you know? And it took a series of things for, you know, a series of achievements for me to come to terms with, you know, you are capable, you are, you, you do have what it takes. Unfortunately, the unfortunate reality is that society puts this blanket on you and decides this is going to be how high you will be able to, to, to go. Recognizing that from a very early stage, it's something that I wanted to, in a sense, disprove or ultimately prove to myself that I was more than that, you know, that I could do more than that. One of the incredible things about having quality education is the fact that you have people around you, teachers, mentors, and so on and so forth, who have the capacity to, to support your growth and to support your dreams, pretty much, you know? The bachelor's degree is great. It prepares you for an engineering degree, but the people who are really pushing the, the cutting edge, who are really pushing the envelope in what it means to be an engineer and what it means to be a scientist in the world today, and actually the people who are defining what the future will look like are doing it in graduate school. They're doing it with the graduate school level of knowledge. If you think you're that type of person, I say go for graduate school. There's so much more to you. There's so much more out there.